Hi everybody, it's Molly at So-and-So's Place. Again, we are gonna really, we're gonna do this video on sewing, cleaning your sewing machine. Um, I've done a little bit of prior disassembly because I don't wanna waste your time with it. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and aim my new toy down at the machine. And I want y'all to get a good look at here. Okay, don't mean to make you dizzy. But you know I'm always working backwards and in high heels. Okay, so first thing I've done is I'm working on a Janome Mag Magnolia 7330. It's one of my student machines. I have taken the presser foot off. And I'll tell you, a screwdriver is really helpful, helpful for this because it should be on there pretty tight. I have taken the bobbin out. That's done. And um, this one only has one screw to loosen. Some of them have two or three. So the screw is out, and I'm keeping everything just right over here. You'll notice I've also already taken the side piece off. And that's just so you're not looking at a big white blob. Um, there is a little bit of dust right up in here. I don't generally lubricate anything up in here. I leave that for my service tech. What I'm talking about doing today is just getting the dust and the crud out of right in here. So now that I've taken this, the screw out of there, I can just gently lift my uh, throat plate right through here. So once this comes off, you're just going to wipe it down with a piece of just white cloth. Okay, this is just plain white cotton. You know, we all have this in our stash. This is a time to use up those little bits left over from a project. Okay, now the things I'm gonna be using today to clean this, um, I have some little sewing machine cleaning brushes. These are some that um, I have here in the shop. I have a big white, big wide fluffy paintbrush and a little bit stiffer paintbrush. Those are really good for grabbing hairs and pulling out. These I have here in the shop. These brushes are great. And these are from Medical Supply. These are also great. They get down into those nooks and crannies. Um, I used to have a set of tweezers, but they have just gone bye-bye. So first of all, oh, and next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my bobbin case. All right. Now, a lot of people are scared to do that, but um, if you'll notice, my thread take-up lever is at the top. If your thread take-up lever is at the top, then when you go to put your bobbin case back in, it will go back in in the correct position. Okay? So that's very important to remember. All right. So I've taken this out, and that is going to be the first thing I'm going to clean. I'm going to wipe this all down. I'm going to get in here, and I'm going to wipe it down with my um, white cloth. And then underneath, can you see all of that dust in there? I'm going to get my fluffy brush, and I'm going to get all of the dust off of it. You don't ever want to blow canned air into your machine because that blows all this dust and dirt down in there. And that is a big no-no. All right. Looking much better, wouldn't you say? Let's set that aside for now. I'm hoping y'all can see down in here, and I'm gonna give the camera a little bit more of a hand looking down in there. Mm. Yeah. Can you see that? That is bad. This machine has been sitting here on the table for um, a couple of days, well, a couple of weeks, I'm sorry, and the students have really been using this one. Woo! The students have really been using this one. So, and then anytime I needed to demo anything, I've been coming back here and grabbing it. So, it's been really abused. Um, one thing you can do with these brushes is just grab, just reach in there and just grab. I mean, just pulls the dust and dirt out.
man, I've got a Kleenex. I'm kind of depositing this in. I'm trying to be very careful and not push any deeper. And just kind of grab this top dirt. Okay. All right. Now, right here, look in this the feed dogs. Can you see that? Can you see what I am pulling out right here from my feed dogs? If you ever sow anything flannel or fleece, oh, buddy, the mess that gets in your feed dogs. That's why I love these little tipped brushes. They're like magnets. They are like fuzz magnets. And the more you clean, the more you find. Look at that. That was in my machine. Lord have mercy, I feel terrible. Now, I meant to sit down and do this two weeks ago and just got sidetracked by life and running the shop and did not do it. I hope my regular technician that comes in here does not see this because he will be so ashamed of me. And this is the kind of thing that, that we as people who sew should be taking care of ourselves. All right, now I'm going to reach up here and I'm going to turn my hand wheel. <gasps> yeah, there's some more. All right, now I'm going to turn my hand wheel. You know, you always turn it towards you, not away from you. And then that gives me a little bit of different perspective down in here where the bobbin case goes. Like I said, this is a student machine, so you can see a few little scrapes and scuffs in there. But in general, these Janomis, they take a licking and keep on ticking. That's why I love them. But I'm sure you have your machine that you love, and that's okay. As long as you keep stitching. Okay. Oh, yeah. Looking much better now. A little dress shop next door, and they've got a little bell in there that goes ding, 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 ding. All right, here we go. My current project, I'm working on some quilts that my mother gave me that my mama and my Aunt Cora and my Aunt Myrtle made way back when. And they are just becoming threadbare and mom wants me to try to at least keep them from completely falling apart. So I'm doing a lot of hand stitching right now. I'm not getting a lot of machine time at the moment, but I am enjoying it very much. I just like sewing. All right, okay, I'm feeling good about that. Now this machine has a needle up, needle down button, so I'm gonna cheat. And looky there. So my take up lever is all the way at the top, so I know I'm in the correct position to return my bobbin case back in. But before I do that, Right here is a wick, and that wick is what should be oiled every time you service your machine. So I'm gonna put a little drop of oil right there. There it goes. That is the only place that I have been informed by my technicians, that I have known many of them, that I should be oiling my machine. I am going to put that right back in. Look, it just sat right in there. This little notch sits right next to this little thing. I have no idea what those things are, but I know that looks right. Okay, now I'm gonna reach right up here. There's a little bit of dust. I just want that dust out of there, you know, cause that dust gets in there and it starts jamming things up. Let's see this piece of cloth over here. And it just builds up and it's not nice. I'll tell you, when I took the, the needle and the presser foot off, it was just nasty. 
dirty. I don't like that. I mean, if they made a Swiffer for these things, then that's what I would, that's what I would do. Right in there where you can see the top of your needle when you put your needle in. Right back behind it, there's a glob. Ugh, look at that. Ugh. Yeah. Listen, as much as I enjoy sewing and as much as I like teaching it, I want my equipment to perform. See little bits of threads on the shaft? Every now and then you can find a thread up in there. Oh my goodness, look at the dust and the dirt right here. Ew, gross. And I don't want that gunk getting on my fabric. I mean, I know I've got one of the world's biggest stashes, but please. I don't want to have to go back and get more because I got gunk on it because I was careless with my machine. Okay. It's looking good. I'm feeling much better about this now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom back together. So first of all, you put your, th your bobbin cases in, throat plate goes back on, and that little screw You know, and if you have nails, this is really fun. Woohoo! Tell you how much I like to challenge myself. I have never used a needle threader built into a machine. How's that? All right, and that cover, because I just don't ever want to get that reliant. I really just prefer to do it myself. All right, that's back up. As long as I can still see to do it, I'm gonna do it. I know some people say, oh, just use the needle threader. Eh. There's just one more thing to have to figure out. Okay, put this back on. I'm gonna put a fresh needle in this machine, so I'm not gonna put that old needle back in. All right, and then this is the side cover, and there is a screw in that hole. This goes right on here. right there. Whoops, sorry, didn't mean to bump you. a little cap to go on there and that where are you come back come back wherever you are <laughs> I hope y'all are enjoying my new toy as much as I am I hope that was helpful that's all there is to it it's not that hard from here, I'll probably get some simple green. That's really an, a good cleaner for the outside plastic on this machine. And unwaxed dental floss, if you just run it through and thread it, just cut off like 12 inches and then thread your machine, run it through like you were threading your machine, that'll grab any extra gunk that's left. I hope that this was helpful. I hope this was a little bit clearer than my last attempt at showing you how I clean my machines. And I hope that y'all have a wonderful day. Molly at soandsosplace.com and soandsosplace.com. We're here in Dayton, Tennessee, but you can shop with us online anytime. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.